Hello friends and family and welcome to the Saturday August 8th edition of the Crippling Anxiety Meditation Conversation. Uh, as you'll notice today we have <laughs> we have a prop. Um, we have a bit of a visual aid to talk through uh, a question that um, a friend asked about visualization and um, this visual aid is kind of intended to give some uh, some context around the idea of working from the outside in so I've mentioned this a few times this idea that over your meditation practice generally you're going to be trying to move from the outside to the inside. And um, it's quite a literal sense of moving inside. Um, and we'll get to that. It, it's not some metaphorical idea of being inside yourself. Um, but we can actually start with these things which are not meditation at all. Um, I've put them in red and everything on the outside is kind of an example um, but I've labeled these as the most external the most outside um, and so some ex examples are things like um, listening to music or reading or doing yoga sleep any of these other activities that consume most of our lives these things are not meditation, obviously, but they're also not really meditative. Um, and this graph, <laughs> these concentric circles I've drawn, um, clearly it's not definitive. This is just a model that I've made up. But uh, I, I think that it's safe to say and safe to argue that these things are not meditative. Um, and so we can just completely leave them aside. Um, with the possible exception of listening to music and some people might argue running. Um, the way that I listen to music is certainly not meditative, uh, but I do think that there are people, I have friends. Um, I remember one point in university, uh, a friend, two friends of mine invited me over to listen to music. And uh, when I came over, we sat down and we would just, we would listen to a song. Um, and that was, that was the entire activity. And this was a thing I never really did as a kid, just sit and listen to music without anything else going on. I'm, I'm not looking around, I'm not outside, I'm not doing chores. I'm just listening to music for the sake of the music. And I think that arguably that kind of activity could be considered meditative. Um, in that same vein, sometimes reading is meditative. So obviously this model isn't, it isn't perfect um, and it's not meant to be definitive. But I think that there are things that you can easily put in the meditative category, which can also be cleanly defined as not meditation. Um, some good examples are chanting and praying. So if you go to a temple, you go to a mosque, you go to a church, and you sit down and you close your eyes and you pray. That is a meditative activity, but that is not meditation. And um, the, there's a variety of reasons to draw that delineation, but um, prayer and similarly chanting are constructive activities. So you are instilling in yourself some sense of um, I hope something good for somebody or I'm imagining something or I feel like I'm having a conversation with God, whatever, whatever your form of prayer might be, um, it is a constructive activity. And in that sense, it is not meditation. Again, um, it's possible that people would argue these, these categories and that's fine. Chanting similarly might be meditative. It might 
even bring you into kind of like a trance state or something like that. But it's not meditation per se. Um, and I've actually included uh, one sort of out of band example here with playing the violin. Because I think when I've watched people play the violin, it, it's an incredibly difficult instrument. I can't imagine playing it myself. It requires an intense amount of focus. And you are, you are focused in such a way that you, you could maybe be considered to have a singular point of focus. But no one would consider, I think, reasonably, uh, that playing the violin is meditation. And I think that in terms of behavior, it actually falls into a similar category to things like chanting and praying. And so the, the question that my friend asked um, was, what did I think of visualization? And I actually have visualization and verbalization. Um, and by verbalization, I mean mental verbalization, actually, in both of these cases. Um, that visualization and verbalization are, are useful. They're certainly useful. And um, they're useful in different ways. And so there's actually uh, another possible option here. You could put visualization in the not meditative category as well. Um, the article she linked me to mentioned using visualization as a tool for um, for imagining your future and imagining good situations and planning and things like that. Um, planning is not, it's not meditation for sure, but it's definitely not meditative either. And so that kind of visualization is a totally external activity. Um, but visualization and verbalization, even if they are, um, even if they are internal in the sense that you are not creating anything, you are not making a sound. Um, they are external if they are, um, and only meditative, if they are uh, complex. And so um, the idea of visualization uh, falls into these few different categories. So if we imagine the first category in this kind of not meditative circle, um, if I'm imagining my future career and I'm visualizing, I'm using visualization, or if I'm using visualization to imagine a marathon that I'm going to run, that is not meditative at all. That is just a regular mundane life activity. Um, I have attended a yoga class before where the teacher would go through the exercise of um, visualization uh, as kind of a guided visualization. So she would describe scenes and we, the students would lie on the floor and we would all visualize the things that she was describing. And it was an interesting experience. Um, it was curious, uh, but I wouldn't consider that meditation at all. Um, it was labeled meditation in the class, but I don't really think that it is. Um, I would consider that a meditative activity um, because it's complex, because you're not actually um, going through an activity of creating focus and you're not exerting any level of control necessarily. Uh, you're just laying there and letting someone else describe pretty scenes and then you're visualizing those scenes. Um, so meditative. Um, similarly with verbalization, um, there are forms of verbalization. So you can repeat ideas to yourself, um, which is an internal uh, silent verbalization. And I need to be careful with the terms internal and external here because we're still on the left side of, of this diagram. But um, silent verbalization where uh, you go through the activity of describing something that you want or that you hope to kind of guide your life toward. Um, it's I maybe well known, I don't know, I don't know how well known it is that this was actually an activity used by Scott Adams, the creator of Dilbert. So he would use affirmations 
to say, I will be a famous cartoonist one day. I'm going to be a famous cartoonist. And he would keep telling himself this until he did it, until he became a famous cartoonist. And that sort of verbalization, a mental verbalization, is not meditation. Um, it is arguably not even meditative, but we can leave it in this kind of orange category. And so that's why these two live over here on the left-hand side. Then when we get to the right-hand side, um, we have visualization and verbalization again. Um, and I need to explain why they're labeled as external here. So visualization and verbalization, even if they're one-pointed, um, which is when they become somewhat uh, reasonable to categorize as actual meditation practices, um, they're still external in the sense that they depend on your sense bases. So they still depend on your, uh, your eyes, even if your eyes are closed, in the sense that you're remembering what something looks like or you're creating that image. It's an artificial image. So if I'm meditating on the image of God um, or the image of a saint, that is artificial. It's not really there. It's not happening to me in the present, right? Um, so I'm creating an image um, for myself to meditate on. And um, it's possible for visualization to be a fully external activity and still be meditation. I can open my eyes and I can meditate on uh, like a kazina or a dot on the wall. I can meditate on a flower that I see. And you can really meditate on anything in this way, but it's a fully external activity. Um, and it, there's an important delineation here, which is that um, everything external is is meditation, but it's kind of um, it's kind of an introductory meditation to this idea of actually moving internally. So I've given one uh, external sense base here. Um, so obviously you have five uh, simple external sense bases, um, sight, sound, uh, smell, taste, and the touch of the skin. And the touch of the skin is a little more complicated um, for reasons that we'll get into in a second. Um, but sound, and in particular meditation on the sound of silence, uh, which is essentially meditating on tinnitus, but, um, it's a valid meditation practice, is to meditate on the present moment of sound, whatever sound is occurring right now. So if a dog barks, I try to hear the dog barking while it's happening. And then as soon as the dog is done barking, then I'm not paying attention to that. I'm not remembering the dog barking. I'm focused on whatever the sound happens to be at that moment. Um, and you kind of work toward this sound of silence, which is that sort of tinny sound in your ears. Um, this is a meditation that people practice and it's valid, but again, it's still external. You're still meditating on uh, a sense base. And you can do this with any of the sense bases, right? Um, some are harder than others. Uh, and it is generally true that it is easier to meditate uh, narrowly on the sense bases which are closer to being internal. And that is why the touch, the sense of touch on the skin is so important because it is the closest to being internal. Still external, if you feel the breath on your skin, initially it's an external sensation. Um, but the reason I've put it in the internal category is because it is the barrier. That's the boundary between external sensations 
external sense bases and the internal sense bases. Um, and the, I won't talk about the internal sense bases and what they have to do with body sensation. Um, that's probably too much for this talk. But this is the idea that I've kind of been putting across before, that our goal is to move from uh, our everyday non-meditative things to more meditative things, and from there into meditation, and then preferably toward internal meditation. And I think that it's safe to say that as far as this sort of innermost blue circle is concerned, Anapan uh, or Zazen is, is probably your first step into that circle um, of internal meditation. And it's probably not that internal to begin with, but the meditation itself sort of straddles the, the barrier between the green circle and the blue circle. Um, and this is a part of the reason that I recommend Anapana so strongly is because it does permit this, that as you get more comfortable with it, as it becomes easier for you, you'll find yourself pulled into the blue circle over time. And so to go back to the original question, which was, do I recommend visualization or what, what do I think of visualization? Um, personally, I do not use visualization for anything, but I don't think there's anything wrong with usually using visualization as a starting point. And certainly in the external world, this, this red circle, uh, if you want to run a marathon and it really helps you to visualize the marathon um, day after day so that you're ready mentally for the race day, that's great. Um, and that's a valid use of visualization. And um, if you find it calming to go through a constructed visualization exercise, um, like the one that I described from the yoga class, in the orange circle, um, go ahead and do that. But, but just be cognizant of the fact that that's, that's not really meditation. Um, and then if you want to use visualization as a meditation aid, Again, that's very useful. And it's in particular with respect to meditation, it's useful to know that your mind can become as, con as concentrated as it might um, using a visualization aid. Um, so it's valuable to uh, sort of walk this path from the external to the internal, but it's also valuable in terms of experimenting for yourself and finding out just what does this feel like to meditate on a visual. Um, and in this green category, this idea of meditating on uh, a visualization, I am talking here about uh, a mental visualization. So eyes closed um, and one pointed on a single image. So whatever that image happens to be, um, doesn't particularly matter. Uh, any image will still, f a singular image will fall in this category. And um, I, I think that uh, you can construct your own model here. You could use this as a basis for your own model and, and rejig things. There's, there's no real truth to this. This is just the way that I see the world. Um, but I think that you can place visualization and possibly verbalization on these different layers for yourself and say, oh, okay, I find it about this useful. It seems about this meditative. Um, let, me, let me kind of locate it somewhere. And um, I certainly don't, uh, I don't recommend against visualization, but I do encourage you to uh, try to work with more internal meditations at some point when you feel like you are uh, comfortable and ready to do that. I strongly recommend breath meditation um, with as, as little external support as possible, starting with Anapan. And then if you find that that's valuable, um, then to move closer to the center of the blue circle with something like Zazen or Vipassana. Um, I would recommend Vipassana, but um, I would also recommend that, that you try both and find out what works well for you. Okay, that's probably enough 
for uh, Saturday. Um, if any of you have any questions about um, this goofy little diagram uh, or anything that I've said about it, um, feel free to message me or call me or whatever you like. Um, and I'll try to answer those questions in a future video. I hope you're all taking good care of yourselves and everyone around you. And I will talk to you again tomorrow. Good night.